My favorite folk tale is the one about Askeladden and his good helpers. Once upon a time, there was a king who announced that anyone who could build a ship that sailed as well on land and on water and through the air as well would get the prince's hand in marriage and have the kingdom too. Now that's a challenge for ambitious entrepreneurs, isn't it? The story revolves around how Askeladden did everything right while his two elder brothers did not. Askeladden, he went out with an open mind, he listened to advice, and he helped everyone he could meet on his way. And in particular, when he met a very old man that needed help, he did everything he could to assist him. And in return, that old man would help him build the magnificent ship. And so it happened. Soon after, Askeladden was standing in his very own ship that could sail as well on land and on water and through the air as well, and he flew off to the king to claim his reward. But there was one catch. He had to pick up anyone he met on his way, the old man had told him. And so he did. And Askeladden, he met three very unusual characters on his way to the king. The first one, was so hungry for meat that he had to eat stones to get his fill. The second one, while well, he was so light-footed, he had to carry weights to keep himself on the ground. The third one, he had seven summers and 15 winters inside of him and had to hold his hand over his mouth to keep them from escaping. Askeladden brought his friends with him and continued his journey. And when they arrived at the castle and offered the ship to the king, he asked for the prince's hand in marriage and half the kingdom, as promised. But, you know, as all entrepreneurial stories go, nothing goes as planned, right? The king said, no, you can't have it. There is more. There are three seemingly impossible tasks that Askeladden also had to carry out before he could claim his reward. And I guess Askeladden had not read the fine print in the king's terms and conditions, right? Um, so here's the key to the story. The three impossible tasks, they fit perfectly well with Askeladden's new friend's special abilities. Task number one was to eat literally tons of meat. The stone-eating guy, he just ate that in no time. Task number two, Travel to the world's end and bring back water for the king's tea in less than two minutes. Well, off flew the light-footed guy. Task number three. Sit through the night in a burning hot sauna. And there you have it. The guy with the, all the seasons inside just let out a couple of winters and problem solved, right? The king had to give in and gave Askeladden his reward, the prince's hand in marriage, and the whole kingdom. And of course, they lived happily ever after. So, Askeladden, he had his way because he acted to, according to some very simple but profoundly important rules. He leveraged on team diversity, right? And by trusting his team members to use their special abilities, they got the courage to do what it took to solve the problems they faced. Diversity, trust, courage. And that is fascinatingly similar to many startup success stories. In my view, an entrepreneur's most important job is to build a team. And that is as difficult as it is important. Because most business plans, they can only define fragments of the work that actually has to be done, right? So how then can entrepreneurs actually know who to get on board? What skills are required to na navigate through stormy weather and fight off the pirates? And where's the map, right? And life is not a fairy tale. The people that you need to solve your problems in your startup they're not just standing on your way, waiting for you to pick them up. 
The fact is that many entrepreneurs are highly ignorant of what actually lies ahead. That's just how startup life is. And ignorance is probably one of the largest threats for many startups. But I argue that you can actually you can fight ignorance with diversity. Startups need a highly diverse team with lots of skills and can-do attitude in order to sail into the unknown and fight off the problems that you face on your way. You may ask, the more diverse, the better? Well, no, not necessarily. But I suggest that you always keep your door open to invite some highly unusual characters into your team. That can be risky, I know. But also, when it works, it can work phenomenally well. You see, when you, you get unusual characters on board, you can build a team that can actually stand out from the crowd so much that it actually turns the behavior of people and markets in your favor. And it's almost like a magic potion, right? Magic in the sense that teams like that, they cannot be designed directly. They just appear like magic. For instance, what would the Rolling Stones be if Mick Jagger had not hooked up with that guitar wizard, Keith Richards, on that train station in Kent in 1961, right? I guess you need a bit of luck to find your magic potion for your team. But I argue that you can prepare yourself to build a team that stands out from the crowd. Being open-minded and being generously hospitable has always brought me forward and always been rewarding to me. I love being around all sorts of people from all, with all sorts of background. And now with nearly 50 years of experience, I'm getting pretty good at it too. And the better I get, the more room I can give towards embracing and handling diversity. And that is my daily reward as a startup CEO. That's why I do this. Then how do you lead or a team like that? Or how do you get a diverse team to work together? Well, you do that by trust and courage, just like Askeladden, right? And in fact, I feel that I am at my best when I am Askeladden. I make sure to have a lot of time to spare to assist my team every day. If I make myself too busy, I fail at doing the most important part of my job, which is to build the team. I express, well, I actively express trust in my team members every day. I ask open-ended questions so that the team can propose the solutions rather than me proposing the solutions for them, so that we together can navigate into the unknown territory. And trust-based leadership is so rewarding because it creates an atmosphere where everybody, even those unusual characters, can feel special and feel free to contribute with, it, with their own abilities, with their own ideas, and within their own limitations, fearlessly. Because trust nourishes courage. And when diversity, trust, and courage flows out into your organization, you may reach the highest level possible in team development, which is a culture of creative freedom that produces magical results. And you know what? You can be Askeladden too. Just remember to embrace diversity, trust, courage. Thank you.